Release the Quacken! Welcome back, fellow game designers. In our last tutorial, we went ahead and made um, some additions to our inventory so that we can break stuff. And now if we open the inventory, things go into it, which is fantastic. So if I grab, you know, this blue block here, hey! And we do have block stacking. So if I grab more than one, they start stacking up. So it would be great if we could start um, dragging and dropping items. Now we don't really have our hotbar or our external hotbar yet, so we won't be able to uh, select and place items just yet, but we will be able to drag and drop, which is going to be necessary to move items from our inventory into our hotbar. So I might as well do that now. All right, so to get this going, let's go ahead and exit here. And let's open up our three blueprint components here, our inventory, our slot, and our drag slot. So I just open this. Okay, make sure I have a, my order. Inventory is the main one, and then our slot and our drag slot. Now I'm going to jump over to the uh, slot here. Let's go to the graph. All right, so last time we were in here, uh, we set up some functions, we populate our inventory. So now we're going to come down, and the first thing we're going to start doing is the highlight of the items in our slot, because when we hover our mouse over, it'd be a good thing to know um, that we have confirmation that our mouse is on this thing versus something else. Okay. Now there are a few different ways you can do this. Um, naturally you can do my preferred method, which is uh, the long way, code it yourself, but for simplicity's sake, we're going to make use of Unreal's built-in functions for this because, well, it's going to be a little bit faster, um, and why not? Uh, if you come over here, we have some uh, function overrides. And you can see you have a function or you have an override. Now what an override does is it allows you to take an existing function and modify what it does. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the drop down here. You can see there are a bunch of overrides available. Now what we want here for the first one would be the on mouse enter. So when your mouse enters one of these boxes, the box is going to say, hey, you've got me. And it's going to light up. So I'm going to go down and look for on mouse enter. Now this part's really easy. From our on mouse enter, we just need to activate uh, the highlight. So I go ahead and drag in our highlight. So hovered highlight, let's drag that in. We'll do a get. And we're just gonna set the visibility. So set visibility. Plug that in. Now we don't want this to be visible um, because visible also means clickable. And we want to be able to have the button that we're creating respond to our, our input. So if what's going to end up happening is if this is set to visible, the highlight's going to be in the way of uh, the actual slot. So to get around that, let's go ahead and take this and set it to non-hit testable, uh, self and children. You can do self only because there really are no children to uh, this particular object. Our highlights don't have any children. But just in case, do self and children as well. And in the event that it could have a child, it would uh, mark that as well. I'm going to go ahead and hit compile. There we go. Play. And now if I open up my inventory, hey, if I have my mouse in a box, it highlights. We I can paint in squares. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do the opposite of that. Whenever the mouse leaves, uh, we want to turn this off. So let's go ahead and grab our function override. So let's go down to uh, on mouse leave. There we go. Now for on mouse leave, we want to take our hovered highlight, drag that in. And we could just copy this. Since I didn't, I'm just going to go ahead and just build off of here. Uh, set visibility. And this time we're going to set it to hidden. Compile it, save it, run it. Hey, look at that. Amazing. And it's, pre it's pretty accurate because it checks the, um, the boundary of the box itself. So if I come out just a little bit, you know, I'm right to the edge. And this one, and that one, and there. So it's, it's pretty good with the... Um, the geometry of the widget. It, ta it takes that into account. So there we go. Okay, so the next thing to do is to handle our mouse um, 
clicks. So to do that, uh, if we go up to our functions and go down to override, we have, uh, bom, 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 bom. where are you? We're looking for on mouse. Um, we, we want up and down, so on mouse, there we go. On mouse button down, that's when you click, and then on mouse button up is when you release. So we want both of these, so we'll do the down. Now when you do this, it's going to open up a new tab, and this is going to be a function with a return value. Okay. Um, don't worry about creating the other one. Right now, just on mouse button down. So for this, we have to do a few things. The first is from our mouse event. We're going to check to see if a drag is detected. So uh, we'll do drag, and then we'll have a function here that is, you see right here under drag and drop, uh, detect drag if pressed. So go ahead and grab that. Let's run this through. Now for the drag key, this is going to be up to you, but naturally we're trying to use our mouse, so hit the drop down, go down to mouse, and we want to use, in this case, the left mouse button. Got that. Now one thing I also want to do is set a variable here for if the mouse is down. So over here, if we scroll down, we should have the is clicked variable that we made earlier. Go ahead and drag that in. We're going to do a set. Make sure we, we uh, click this to true, and we'll just run that through. And then the return value can run through as well. Okay. Compile that, save it. All right, now let's go ahead and do our mouse button um, up. So come down to mouse button up. It's going to be a new function. And then all we want to do here is Take our clicked variable, we'll set it to false. But we do have to have a return value. If we try to compile here, it's going to say, hey, you have to return something. If there's no uh, mouse event or input event to return, you can just have it uh, create one. So we're going to come down here and do a make reply. And that should handle that. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, set up our drag and drop functionality. So up here on our overrides, we have the on drag detected. Then grab that. Make some room here. So if a drag is detected, we are going to create the slot that's going to appear over the mouse. So this is where our drag slot comes in. So we'll create widget. And this will be our drag slot. So drag slot. There we go. The drag contents is going to be the slot contents. And then for the previous slot, we're going to pass in our self. So we're going to do self. And you'll kind of understand why in a minute. So the, the reason that is, is the particular square that we're in, so let's assume that this is one of the boxes we're in. Um, if I click and drag, this box is going to load itself as the previous slot, so that when I uh, get my mouse over this box, it's going to read this one as the previous one, right? So when I drop, it's going to say, hey, where'd you come from? Well, you came from here. So that's what we're doing. Is we're saying, hey, this is my stuff, this is me, and it's just creating an identifier, basically. And then the next thing to do is to create our drag and drop operation. So we'll do that. Create drag and drop operation. There we go. Now for the drag and drop class, you can create one if you want. Uh, I'll show you that real quick. You don't have to. Using the default is fine. I'm just going to go down here, blueprint class, and then in our all classes, you can do a drag and drop operation. Now if you do this, you can create one and you can specify all the content that would go into this drag and drop, but you don't actually have to do that. The default one is perfectly fine. So I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel. I'm going to jump back into my slot. So for the um, for the payload, the payload is going to be whatever this object is, because we're loading our contents into this uh, slot. Now, you could, instead of doing what I'm doing this way, you could create your own drag and drop operation and pass the contents into that. Okay, there's more than one way to skin a cat. I think this way that I'm doing is a lot faster and less overhead. 
So I'm going to go ahead and just pass in the payload here. Now for the drag and drop visual, I'm also going to use my widget. Now the reason why they split this up is you could, if you wanted to just have uh, the widget as a visual representation but have the contents be something different, this is where you would do that. So in this case I'm using this for both, but you could have the payload be a separate you know, object over here that you've dragged in, and you could have the visual be the widget itself. Again, up to you. You can also specify uh, in the dropdown. So if you have a, um, an object you've created, you can specify that here. In our case, again, I'm just going to use this one. And voila. Uh, the next area is the pivot. This is where it's going to show up on the mouse and you click and drag. Um, is it going to show up center of the mouse? Is it going to be the top left or bottom or whatever? So this is up to you. I think center is fine. But we do need to make sure that our return value is passed into the operation. Because this is going to be very important for the drop effect. Okay, I think we're good here. Compile that, save that. And if we hit play, and I drag, we now have a thing that follows our mouse. Now if I let go, it just kind of disappears. It's, it, it is considered a drag cancel, or a drop cancel. But now I can drag from there and drop to wherever. Our contents, of course, don't travel. One, because there's nothing here, and two, because we haven't set it up. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's jump over to uh, bum, 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 our overrides, and we'll do the on, on drop. There we go. Make some room here. Okay, from the operation, this is where we're going to get our payload. We are want to, we want to get the payload. From the payload, we're going to cast to the drag slot. So cast to drag slot. Since each uh, individual slot is going to be its own entity, we want to make sure we're casting to the specific one. So when we cast to it, it's going to do an object check, and it's going to check the object compared with the payload. So whatever. So if we put in slot 1 into the payload, when we cast, it's going to cast to slot 1. If we have slot you know, 2 in the payload, it's going to cast to slot 2, and so on and so forth. So this is going to be our validation check. Okay. From our drag slot, we want to get our slot contents. So get slot contents. Or sorry, we want, um, we called it something different. It's called our drop contents, drag contents. Been a little while. Uh, get drag contents. There we go. We also want to have the uh, the previous um, slot that we came from. So get previous slot. Uh, from our uh, slot contents here, we want to update the uh, slot contents. So update slot contents. Pass that in. And then we want to clear our previous slot. But we never set up a function for that. So let's go ahead and stop here. We'll compile. We still need to finish this, so we're going to come back to it. Let's go back to uh, our event graph. Let's make a custom event. We'll call this one clear uh, slot. And then from here, we're going to take our slot contents, set them. I'm going to go ahead and open these up. We're pretty much going to be setting these to zero, so having these empty is perfectly fine. So if I split this, all this being set as default is fine. I don't need to do anything to it. Go ahead and reconstruct that pin. We also want to get the item, because we want to clear the item being shown. So we'll do that, do we'll get, and set brush. We also want to get the brush. Open that. And open this one. We're going to pass everything in except the image. So pass in, pass in, pass that in. We'll get the image uh, from the icon over here, so we'll pass that. And this can run that. Okay, so I'm going to come on over, 
we want to get our item count. Make sure we set this to zero. So we'll do a um, where are you? Set text. Grab this bottom one. Set that to zero. We also want to hide all of our highlights. So we'll get our uh, drag highlights, our hover highlights, and our selected highlight. We'll get those. Set visibility. And we'll just set all these to hidden. And then lastly, we're going to do our um, clicked variable. Just make sure we set that to no longer clicked. All right, we compile that. Let's jump over into our drop. And from our previous slot, we want to clear slot. Pass that through. And then for the return, uh, if our return is successful, then we do a true. Now, if any of this fails along the way, uh, we should have a return failed. Um, typically, like if the cast fails or something, that's where it, where it would go. So we'll do a return. And that should do it. This cast should never fail, but hey, if it does, you can always check it. Let's go ahead and test it. Hit play. Um, bom, bom, bom. Let's go ahead and grab some blocks here. And if I drag one, hey, I can pick it up. Can I drop it? I can drop it. Uh, the clear is not quite what I wanted. I'll have to go back and fix that. But that does replace. Now, if we ever drop on a uh, block that has stuff in it, we're going to want to check for that. Um, let's solve this problem first. Okay, let's go back to our event graph here. And let's take a look at our clear slots. That looks right, that looks right. Our item count. Uh, we've got our highlights. What did we not do? Oh, I know what we didn't do. We did not clear the item. We're still showing the item image. Let's go ahead and get that. We'll also hide that. Because at this particular moment in time, the item image is also empty. So I'll grab that, test it. Let's pick up a block. Hey, it works. And if I have blocks that are stacked, cool. But you see, we're leaving um, some zeros behind. So we want to make sure that we turn those off as well. Okay, so make sure that we also run our item count under there. Okay, uh, so now we have. I think a couple items up. Now we can drag and drop, and that all works pretty good. Now there is a, uh, a problem. Of course, if I drag and then I um, drop on myself, I clear the spot. We don't want to do that. Also, if there's another item already in that spot, um, we don't want to clear it, right? Uh, you have a couple options. You can have it to where it switches, so the item dropped now changes places with the item in your hand, basically. Or you can have it to where you just can't drop onto a spot that already contains an item, so you have to move it to an empty spot first. Uh, up to you. Uh, for our case, uh, I'm going to do the uh, simpler of the two methods, which is go to our drag and drop. And then in here, we can do a little branch. Uh, do a couple checks. The first one will be to get our slot contents. Let's go ahead and open that up. 
And we're just going to check to see if it's empty. So the easiest way to check that is to see if any of these have something in them. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to grab my type here. I'll do equal. So if it's equal to none, then we know it's empty. Branch. So if it's empty, um, we can then do this next step. So if I go ahead and run this, pick up this one, pick up that one. If I drag it, I can drop it. If it's got some in it, it won't happen. Uh, now we want to check to see if the item we're, or the slot we're dropping in is the same one. So after we do our cast, let's do a double check. Let's get a reference to ourselves. So if the previous slot is ourself, so we'll do an equal of object. Um, actually, we'll do, we'll do not equal because we don't want it to be ourselves. So, not equal. We'll do a branch off of that. Alright, so if the other object is not ourself, we can continue. If it is ourself, um, you want to exit. Same thing over here. All right, see what we get. So if I drop onto myself, it should have no response. Drop on something else, no response. I drop out here, no response. Now one thing is um, whenever you drop and it doesn't go anywhere, you want to make sure that um, since we're using this clicked variable, you want to make sure that on cancel this gets set back to false. So let's go back to our event grab here. And we will get our override. We want on drag canceled. So the cancel is uh, when the user of the <clears throat> user cancels a drag operation, typically when they simply release the mouse button after beginning a drag operation but failing to complete the drag. Okay. So if that happens, we want to make sure that um, we are setting this back to false. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, if we release the mouse, we already have it on our mouse button up that we are unchecking our little clicked button. Um, true. However, when you are outside, let's do this here. Uh, when you're outside of one of these squares, like if I'm over here, this one is not really checking anymore. Um, it's better to see that if I write some text on here. So let's do this for fun. Let's grab some text. I'm going to add this here. I'll call this test text. Let's move this bottom corner. Right there. Let's go back to our graph. Event graph here. We want very simply, let's do a um, tick. 
and I want the event tick to be the value of this click here. Now I know I could print a string, but it's it's going to be much more um, validating to do it this way. So where are you? Oh, I never set it to a variable. Grab that text box, and we'll make a variable. Set text. So if I open this up, they're all false. If I click in here and I let go, cool. If I click and drag and let go, now we have a false uh, return. If we go back here and we do this on cancel, we'll break that. If I click, let go, cool. If I click and drop, ah, you see how that true is still true? So we want to just make sure that that is um, being reset because if we ever need to rely on that variable, um, it would be the incorrect value. Just make sure that we are indeed turning that off. Hey. Okay. We can clear this. We don't need this uh, anymore. And we don't need this uh, little text guy. So I'm going to grab him. Compile that, save that. And the last thing I want to do is fix a slight problem with the inventory. So if you jump in, uh, you may not even notice this yet, but if you open up your inventory and you go ahead and load in an object, or uh, you pick up an object, if you drag it and put it somewhere, then you exit, come back, it goes back to zero, or goes back to the original position. Uh, the reason for that is our inventory exists on our player, but we're actually casting it to the screen. And when we move this thing, this is temporary. It doesn't get sent back to the player. So what we want to do is whenever we move an object, is we want to store this um, and give it back to the player. There are a couple ways you can do that. We can tell the inventory itself to update the position, and then upon the closing of the inventory, we can send that to the player. Or we can just skip the middleman, and whenever we move a block, cast directly to the player and update the player's inventory directly. Either one is fine. Um, one is slightly more work than the other uh, for, for little benefit. So um, whichever one you want to do, again, doesn't really matter. There's a little bit more impact if you do it um, updating the inventory directly first. But, you know, no harm, no foul. Uh, the simplest way is the way I'm going to take, which is to go to our slot here. Let's go to the graph. And let's make a custom event on our event graph here. Custom event. We'll call this update layer inventory. Um, contents. That way you don't get confused if you're updating the, um, the widget inventory. Because remember, the one that's stored on the widget, this inventory contents, this one's temporary. That one's just being displayed on the screen. And we get that from our player. This comes in from the player. So uh, I'm just going to update the one that's currently on the player. Again, skip the middleman. So on this, we want to take in um, the item structure, or our slot contents. So let's add a input. We'll call this one uh, new slot. Contents. I guess this is going to be the contents of the new slot. And I'll make this the slot contents. And we are using the block structure, if I remember correctly. Uh, yes. Block structure. We also want the index of the previous slot. So let's add in a uh, variable. We'll call this uh, previous slot. Oops slot index, and this will be an integer. And we also want to have the slot index um, for our particular slot. The simplest way to do that is to store it on itself. So if I come up to variables, go to variable, I'm going to call this one index, make that a uh, integer. I'm going to go ahead and make this 
uh, visible and exposed on spawn. Compile that, save that. With this being exposed on spawn, I'll go back to the inventory. And then on our inventory contents, if I come over to where we're creating the slot, so create slot widget, I'm go ahead and refresh this. We now have an index input. And that we can get directly from our uh, for loop. So I'll drag off of my array index. And I'll drag that directly in. Compile that, save that. So now I have stored, whenever the uh, slot is created, a reference to its own index. Next we want to cast to our player. So cast to player. We'll get the player uh, character. Uh, let's get the uh, inventory component. And then we want to get the inventory um, contents. Let's go ahead and split this. And then from our slot contents, or our inventory contents, sorry, we're going to do a set array element. I want to get two of those. It doesn't really matter the order. I just want to make sure that this is being read. Um, one of these is going to be the current index. So I'll do the first one. The item is going to be passed in from here. New contents. Make sure we run this. Uh, this one here, we want this to be the index from our previous slot. Drag that in. And then the item we can leave empty. You can expose this if you want and you see what's going to go into it. But this can be empty because it's going to be blank. File that. Let's go to our drop. And then on the drop, we're going to add in just a little bit of stuff right near the end. And this is going to be the update uh, inventory. So update player inventory. Pass that in. The slot contents for this is going to come out of the drag contents. We'll drag that in. And then the previous slot, we're going to grab its index. Do a get. And its index can go into the previous slot index. We'll compile that, save that. So now, if we go ahead and pick up an object, or whichever, and we move it, we exit, we enter, they stay where they're at. Hey, there we go. So now we can move these around however we like, and they'll stay there. All right, and that's going to call for this video. Um, go ahead and save it. In the next one, we will continue on with our inventory. We'll fi uh, figure out our hotbar and get our ability to uh, select and place blocks into the world. So until then, stay tuned, and I shall see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for checking out the channel. Misty and I both thank you. If you enjoyed that video you just watched, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, uh, I'm getting into NFTs. Those are, those are big these days. I was thinking about creating my own coin, but we'll, we'll get into that uh, at a later date. But uh, NFTs are pretty, pretty hot right now. I'm converting my artwork to NFTs. You can see my uh, rareable uh, page right here. I've only got four items, but I'm adding one uh, as they go. They're not cheap to make, so i gotta got to make them as they go. Um, if you want to you know, support the channel other ways, of course, there's Lanthus Studios merch, which you can see right here on my Teespring store, as well as Amazon. Speaking of Amazon, I have my books up there uh, under Bruce RF, which is my pen name. Um, Life and Times of Donna Martin, as well as The Guardian's Path of Ascension. You can flip through those and see the reviews and um, yeah, you know, grab a copy, read it, tell me what you think. It helps me out as an author. It also helps me out as, you know, it all everything goes back into the stuff that I'm doing. So uh, more content for you. If you want to keep up with me throughout the day or just kind of see what I'm, what's going on in life, uh, hit me up on Twitter under uh, BruceRF1. Again, that is my pen name. If you want to see uh, what's going on in my blog, ronflowersjr.me, you can see what I'm writing about, um, 
what else is going on in life, uh, difficulties that I have with my uh, project that I'm working on. Um, a lot of my devlog stuff kind of goes there before it comes here, so it's another way of kind of getting into that. I do also have a Patreon where I release content early if you want to get access to uh, things ahead of time, because uh, most of the stuff that I produce, I'd like to, I do things on Sundays and I post on Wednesdays most often, but it goes to um, Patreon first, so it's kind of there usually a week or so ahead of time and then it has a release schedule. So if you want to see things early, go there. Uh, let's see, what else? What else is going on? Uh, you can also follow me on Facebook under um, you can do the Lame Duck Studios Facebook or the Bruce RF uh, Facebook. Both of those are available. And a lot of these links are down in the description. So if you want to just like hit those up and just click on them and follow them through, that's another way of getting there. Also, we are at 1,300 subscribers. Woo! Uh, we're this close to 10,000. But small milestones first. Let's get to 2,000 subscribers and then we will continue our road building toward uh, that 10,000 milestone. That is going to be pretty, pretty awesome for this channel, my humble, humble channel. So yeah, that's that's all I have for you on this outro. It's a bit of a long one with a lot of stuff going on. Anyways, stay tuned, and I shall see you next time.